Hello, morning light. Climbing through my windowsill, dancing on the tile, warming up winter's chill. Somehow I feel better than before. I'm so sorry I just introduced this video with the most stereotypical YouTube intro known to man. Please don't leave. I'm so sorry. Anyway, how's it going, folks? I'm Eric Floberg, a portrait and wedding photographer and filmmaker. I live in Chicago, Illinois, and this is the video where I talk to you about all of my film cameras. Nice, solid intro. I don't know what to do now. Very excited about bringing this video to you guys today because I'm just really passionate about film photography. I am by no means an expert. Uh, I'm actually, I would really kind of consider myself a novice when it comes to film photography. But I'd like to kind of open up the dialogue and discussion about it with that being okay. I think there's a lot of people, is this in focus? So I kind of want to open up the discussion today about what it means to be a film photographer, that you don't need to be a professional to do it. Uh, that it could just be a passion or a hobby and quite honestly I feel like I'm kind of a novice when it comes to film photography about how little I actually know about the medium although I love it a ton and I think that's okay a lot of people feel afraid to do it because yeah, it's, there's just so much to know and learn and it's confusing and all that good stuff and it doesn't help that there are people in the comments section who just are the worst people on the internet <laughs> when it comes to film photography. So today I want to break down the four different cameras I have for uh, 35 millimeter film photography and I hope you enjoy it. Now before I break down every film camera that I own, I wanted to give a little bit of a story of a preference of how I got into film photography. And if you don't want to hear that, go ahead and skip to this part of the video if you just want to see all the cameras. <laughs> Now when it comes to my professional work, I shoot digital and I am currently shooting on the Canon 5D Mark IV. So all of my weddings that I shoot, I shoot on these camera bodies. And don't get me wrong, there are plenty of times throughout my career so far where I've wanted to switch systems to different camera brands, uh, but I've just kind of stuck with Canon being tried and true. Uh, there are definitely things I don't like about it, uh, but that's going to come with any camera brand that you choose to go with. Yep, just lean into the things that, uh, you know, the strengths for Canon, and I've just stuck with it. And that played an integral part on why I got started on film photography. Now the reason I bring this up is because when I started toying with the idea of wanting to shoot film photography, I wanted to do something that wasn't going to break the bank. So when I had a conversation with my buddy Daniel, he said that he had a Canon 1V for sale. He didn't want any more, and it matched up perfectly with the system I was already using because it took EF lenses. He only sold it for $300 to me, so I was, it was a no-brainer. The first film camera I ever owned, and it was great because it's so similar to the 5D body. I think at that time I had a 5D Mark III, and it's just so similar. Uh, the, the body shape is almost exactly the same. It takes, like I said, the EF lenses, and what's so great about that is it gives you the, the kind of depth of field you can get with these EF prime lenses. So it actually makes for an incredible 35 millimeter film camera for pretty dang cheap. So early on, I started shooting with it. One thing I really love about this camera, and if you know me, uh, you know I love this, uh, you can do double exposures on this thing. So there's a little panel on the side where you can open it up and tell it how many exposures you wanna do over top one another. So that's pretty rad as well. After I messed around a while with the Canon 1V, I decided that I wanted to try out a rangefinder, which is more of like a compact street photography film camera. And at the time in 2016, 2017, and still today, the king of that market is the Leica M6. I'd always wanted a Leica. It's like the Cadillac of car 
cameras. <laughs> you know, obviously everybody loves them because they look super sexy, but the truth is the build quality on a Leica is phenomenal and it's built to last for years and years. So I ended up pulling the trigger and buying a Leica M6 for $1,500. And ultimately that ended up being a good investment because we're starting to see that this camera is selling for about twice that price online today. Now the quality that you get out of a Leica M6 isn't that much different than any other rangefinder, but there are a few things that I love about this camera uh, that does set it apart from the crowd. Clearly it's very sexy, it's beautiful, it's got a matte black finish, and uh, yeah, it's just that heirloom that I want to keep in my family and probably never sell. Second, and what's really most important to me, is that it's very, very quiet. Uh, I love shooting street photography on this camera, and so when you're trying to be inconspicuous and you know, photographing people and you don't want to interrupt what they're doing, you don't want to ruin the scene, it's really amazing because you barely hear the shutter when you click it. On top of that, I didn't want to lug out the huge Canon 1V when I was running around our apartment photographing our kids, and so uh, it was a lot easier to use this system, especially because it is a rangefinder. And if you're not familiar with what a rangefinder is, it's a completely different focusing system. You look through here and there are two little rectangles that you need to match up in order to focus. So everything is manually focused and, and nothing is automatic. It's all manual. So in one sense, it makes you slow down and care about each frame, but also you can be pretty qu quick with lining those two subjects up and hitting the camera, hitting the shutter. And going along with that, with all the manual settings, uh, there is a dial on the back where you manually put in what speed your film is. So if you're shooting Portra 400, you have to tell the camera that you're shooting 400 speed film. If you're shooting Portra 800, you gotta switch it up to 800. That way it tells the meter what is what when you're looking through the viewfinder and so that you can expose your photos correctly. And since I didn't want to spend thousands on a Leica lens, I cheaped out and got the Zeiss Biagon 35 F2. And unfortunately, the aperture ring on the front has kind of fallen off. And so it still works and it's de-clicked. So there's no ticking noise when you change the aperture on the front, but it's definitely not locked in anymore. So. That might be the next investment with this camera specifically with some Leica glass, which is a huge reason why people get Leicas because of the glass that they make. A lot of people might feel like I'm missing out and I kind of feel that way when I'm shooting with this camera. So eventually I hope to own some Leica glass with it as well. Also, this is the 0.85 version of the Leica M6. There's the 0.72 and the 0.85 and that has to do with the size of the viewfinder. There are lines in the viewfinder that show you what your dimensions are with the lens that you use and 35 is the widest you can go with those lines on the 0.85. Also, it's a TTL, which means that you could put a flash up here and then it'll auto flash for you when you're taking frames. So I'm hoping to get a small flash for it as well. Here's some examples of my Leica M6 in use. And before I move to the next camera, I just want to take a second to let you know that it would help me a ton with my channel if you like this video, if you're enjoying the things I'm saying and talking about and looking at. And if you want to leave a comment, that would help with the algorithm as well and, you know, help my channel blow up. No, but seriously, thank you so much for the comments on the last video, guys. You just blew that thing out of the water and I really appreciate that. So anything you want to talk about film-wise, go ahead and comment it down below. Or if you just want to make the best dad joke, I'll pin the best dad joke. Next camera is the Canon SureShot 85 Zoom. We inherited this camera when my wife's grandfather passed away. And crazy enough, uh, there was an expired roll of film with a couple frames already shot on it in this camera when we got it. And it was of her deceased grandmother, which was kind of crazy. So we finished that roll and it was all like purple and orange. Take a look. But this is a camera I keep around the house because it is fully auto. Uh, there are different settings that you can have on it, but I like to use it as fully auto, either with flash or without flash. And then you don't have to worry about getting your settings right every single time. You can literally just run around and fire it off whenever you want, because it has a built-in flash here. There's not much more to talk about <laughs> with this camera. 
There's no film in there, I didn't waste it on it. Okay. What's really cool is you can also put a timestamp on this. So it has those little orange numbers in the corner of the, the day. So if you wanna be that hipster that posts to Instagram and has a little timestamp, that's not like an actual filter or whatever, you can do it with this <laughs> It's the way that you move and I'm falling in love with you. It's the things that you say think you really want to. Finally, my last camera is the Olympus Stylus uh, Zoom 140. And this was a gift given to me by Benj Heish, um, a buddy out in Seattle. Thank you, Benj, for sending this to me. Very similar to the Canon Sure shot that I just showed you, but I think this one really mimics and is very similar to one of the most popular point and shoot film cameras on the market called the Contax T2. And um, I feel like it's that because it, uh, the way it's built. Similarly to the, to the last camera, it opens up and the lens pops out like that. But uh, it has this little cover that goes over that lens. So to close it, open it, pops out, and this little flash guy pops up too. Same deal here, zooms, except this one is a little bit more extensive. That's what she said. Very similar to the last camera, it has a timestamp on here as well that you can set. So you get those um, orange numbers on the bottom for the date as well. And uh, same deal, fully automatic camera with the built-in flash. So functions very similarly to the Canon Sure Shot, but honestly, I just like the way this one feels in my hand more. It's got that kind of unexplainable thing that I like more about it. So this is what I prefer to kind of take out with my family while keeping the Canon back at home. Makes me fall in love. Really, uh, something I want to communicate when it comes to film photography is that it's just a fun medium. It's expensive, don't get me wrong. But the reason I love shooting it is that it makes me slow down. It makes me care about every frame because if I'm spending 80 cents per image, 80 cents to a dollar per image, I need to care about the frames that I'm taking. Can't tell you how many times I've put my Leica to my face, framed up a shot, and then didn't take it because I didn't think it was good enough. Film photography may be really intimidating, and I get it. There are a lot of people who are total snobs online who think they know everything about it, which, okay, maybe they do, and I'm not one of those people. Uh, but you can't let those things get to you. You can't be afraid of trying the new thing that you might love. I love doing film photography. So much more than digital uh, in the sense of my personal life because when I shoot digital of my family, I never edit it. It just sits on a hard drive and we never see those photos. So the care that I have for each film photo uh, makes me care about the photos that I take with my family. And ultimately, that's what it's all about for me with film photography. I just love photographing my life through the medium of film. Final thoughts, you don't need to be a pro to shoot film. Try it out, have fun. I linked all the cameras down in the description uh, if they're available for used sale on Amazon. Uh, if they're not, just go ahead and Google them. I'm sure you'll be able to find them. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And as always, lean into what makes you different. Thanks for tuning in to my show. Love you guys. See ya.